Hello everyone, welcome to this stream. Today we will continue work on the USB PMOD uh, that we uh, started designing two weeks ago, I think. So uh, just a reminder, uh, we were working on this uh, PCB here. It's meant to be a small PMOD that plugs in into an FPGA development board and allows us to connect USB, uh, a USB-C connector and a USB-A connector uh, to an FPGA dev board and provides multiple uh, modes of operation where you can be uh, implement a host or a client or you can uh, feed through data and monitor it uh, that is uh, um, going through the USB connector. So essentially it allows us to connect USB devices, connect, uh, um, emulate uh, devices as well as do uh, USB protocol analysis. Um, this was all spearheaded as an idea to make by Kate Temkin and uh, there's a lot of the design decisions and especially the stuff above here that uh, Conrad Beckman uh, I just uh, basically stole from his designs. Um, so thank you very much, Conrad, for putting together your own uh, PMODs. And I lifted that and with his help, he's also in the chat and helped me a lot um, with this stuff. So we are combining this together and making a nice PMOD. So this circuit, um, since last uh, stream, I made one big change. Uh, so I moved Uh, if you want to emulate a host, don't you need a bigger capacitor? I don't know that. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know the details. I am following other people that know USB much better than I do. Uh, and for now, I this is not meant to be spec exact. It's like uh, this is this is meant to just tinker and and screw around with USB. Uh, I'm not sure we are trying to do. Uh, uh, spec compliant, hundred uh, percent USB host here. Uh, it will be. It will work. Uh, that's the that's the goal here. It's like, will it work? Yes, it will work. Uh, will it work with everything? No, it won't. Uh, it's uh, yes, rough guidelines. So uh, that's the goal of this design. I don't want to make it super complicated. If we are going to the uh, fully host compliant stuff, I would probably use a Fi anyways. Uh, this is just, oh, just put two connectors on a board and uh, a few passives and that's good enough. Um, yeah, uh, if, that's, uh, if that's all that is necessary to just add a capacitor footprint on here, sure, we can do that. <laughs> right, <laughs> specs. <laughs> So USB as a standard is such a grab bag of spec non-spec and spec non-compliance. It's just wonderful. It's like this should, it's pretty much already a meme in the community. It's like you bring up USB, you end up in a rant every single time because it's just a gift that keeps giving. <laughs> so yeah, we are just trying to make it make it uh, work uh, somewhat. Yes, uh, uh, electronic EO, if that is uh, an easy solution to just add a capacitor here, sure, we can add a capacitor. But for now, I just want to finish this ASAP so that I can wrap this up and send it to Kate so that she has something to work with. Uh, that's the goal of this. I don't want to uh, yak shave this for the next uh, five weeks. That's the that's the goal here. I really want to just wrap it up. Um, I um, so um, since so so let me t tell you what happened since last week. Mainly, I swapped the circuitry uh, for the pull up pull downs between the USB A and USB C connector. That was the biggest change. Um, because uh, we realized that the USB-A connector is mostly useful as a, a host or a feed-through. Uh, so there is no real need for all the different uh, USB um, pull-up uh, modes. So I uh, moved one of the pins that were used for the pull-up pull-down on the USB-A side 
and swapped it with the USB-C side uh, because it's much more useful as a, um, as a client or like a downstream device. So if it is a downstream device, uh, the, ch the, naming ch uh, the naming of this changed between USB 2 and USB 3. USB 3 has upstream devices and downstream devices. So you have upstream device meaning the computer uh, to simplify the thinking and the downstream device is the one controlled. Uh, so it is uh, the client or the device itself. So uh, we this one needs all the different pull up pull down modes so we need uh, to have the uh, cc control as well as the pull up pull down on uh, plus and minus lines so that's why it has the full set of controls with three pins and uh, the usb a just gets one pull up pull down so it can be a, a 12 kilo ohm uh, pull down right that's yes that's pull down for um, being a host and uh, just uh, one pull up, uh, pull up for just standard. Um, um, in the meantime, also Eddie uh, worked on a calculator to calculate this capacitors, uh, this resistor values. So let's uh, take a quick look at this. Um, um, so thank you for that. So this is, uh, let's run this fiddle. So essentially, um, it allows us to set the different values uh, and calculate and take into the account the voltage drop of the diodes to calculate the correct resistor values uh, to have the equivalent current uh, setting. So um, this will allow us to tune the resistor values much more accurately. So thank you, Eddie, for putting this together. Um, I, this is something I, uh, I ended up not uh, wanting to do directly on stream and calculate the values, but I really want to give him a huge shout out that it is uh, put together and it's awesome. Uh, we will uh, definitely use that to tune the values. Um, right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, this is this is uh, this will be very useful. I'm glad uh, everyone agrees. So give uh, a big round of applause to uh, Eddie for putting this together. This is really awesome. Uh, we this the values here. This is what we want to tune because the diodes have a little bit of a voltage drop, and uh, so in the equivalent circuit for the resistance. So there is, you want to match it. So the actual values here is actually 15K, um, pull down and uh, 1.5K pull up, but we want to tune it more accurately to be a, a better circuit with more accurate values. These are, let's consider these little bit still as placeholders. These are close enough uh, if you just do back of the envelope calculation. What we didn't calculate are the, equivalent, the correct values for the USB-CC. There is actually in the standard, this is something I asked Kate uh, last week, uh, there is a specification for the current um, um, calculation in the USB-C uh, or the USB 3.0 spec. So we can directly use the current values uh, here to calculate the correct uh, uh, resistor values. So uh, this is a much bigger section in the new standard than it used to be. Uh, so I think uh, we can use that to calculate these accurately. So again, consider these as placeholders. Uh, we will do the exact calculation uh, a little bit later. And again, big thanks and big applause to uh, Eddie for putting together this calculator and check it out, give it a try. Um, uh, give it a try, and we will uh, we will um, um, try to make this tool um, even better. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for putting all this work into this. All right. So um, anything else? So um, also, what I did is set all the footprints uh, for all the parts, and I 
this is the status of the board. So this is how it looks. We have this um, special connector. So this is a dual connector that has USB-C and USB-A. Let's see if I can find this. Okay, so this is the connector that we will be using. <clears throat> I don't have a 3D model for it yet, but that's fine. We can just do the layout. Um, Jordi uh, made the design. Oh, so by the way, Jordi, uh, check uh, Discord. I sent you some DMs and I'm not sure you got them. So <laughs> while I have you here, <laughs> uh, before I forget. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, he, Jordi uh, made a footprint for this, so I imported this into the uh, PKL library, and this is what we will be using, a USB-A and a USB-C connector. Um, uh, and, uh, and this is uh, the layout. So I already started a little bit to figure out how hard it will be um, do some layout stuff here. Uh, the, it doesn't seem to be too hard. We still have space for uh, electronic EOS cap capacitor, so we I will drop it in after the stream. <laughs> Math, yeah, it's like getting getting every every uh, every case uh, correct. It will take a little bit. Uh, time so yeah anyways so uh, um, I was trying to figure out what is the best layout for all these um, um, pads so we have those jumpers this basically allows us to jump the USB-C DM to the DM I think this should actually be on the other side but if we already have these uh, diodes it's like this is the question I have should we have it on the inside side of things or should it be connecting on the outside? Um, it doesn't really matter, does it? I will leave it as is. It's like I will not yak shape this at the moment. So I will just leave the connections as they are. Um, we have um, these diodes. So let's just, uh, let's just start and just make these connections really quick. Uh, the simple ones and then we will figure out what next needs to be done uh, yeah so then we need to connect this this will go like this Yeah, I uh, my goal for today is really uh, make it as uh, quick and dirty as possible. Um, the making it a really beautiful and uh, um, good connection uh, with uh, good impedance and stuff. Uh, this is not the goal for today. I just want to finalize this board uh, and get it out of the door so that we can do some experiments. Um, yeah, USB ground. So this is the USB-C uh, data connection. We can just have this connected. And I probably will route uh, the rest of this connection underneath the board. Uh, unless like this there we go so these are the pull ups and pull downs and then we have this interesting quirk here yeah we can go like this so this is the dm and dp for the usb c connector <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, it's still appreciated, Eddie. Thank you very much. Just, just remember this. Uh, your work is very much appreciated. Don't worry about it. Uh, there we go. So we need to get this. The ground it will be interesting. So I think what I will do. I didn't want to uh, add floodplains on this uh, for now. Just make the connections as they are. Really quick and dirty. Uh, yeah, there we go. We can go like this, like this. We still need to connect. Yeah, so these can go with a thicker trace up here to VBus. Should I go like this or should I? Uh, thinking, thinking. What are you thinking about? Yeah, so the CC have to go here to get a plug-in. This can go on the bottom, so we can deal with these on the bottom. Yeah, the CCs can go on the bottom side. So let's go to the bottom. Uh, come on. Let's do this this way. The S2 should be actually connected. This is weird. So this is actually not connected to, to the shield. S1 and S2. I'm curious why. We don't have a... Oh, this is A2, S1 and S2. This is missing the S2 pin for the shield too. So... Um, Either I fix it in the footprint or I fix it in the schematic symbol. That's a good question, which one will make more sense. So this should be connected to ground, so that will be fine. Uh, because we don't have any special circuit for the grounding. That's that. Uh, is What else do we have? So power is connected. So I think all the power things besides the ground here should be connected now. So maybe we do like this and just connect the ground with a thinner because I don't want to make a really heavy connection here. Like this, that looks good to me. So this is, as I said, quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Uh, the pull-ups are good. Pull-ups are good. Uh, like this. And then this will be the interesting part. How we... So DM and DP. This one can go like this. It can be connected here, right? Oh, right. That was the issue I was running into. Um, I don't have a very good uh, routing because I have USB-C connection uh, DPDM on one end and then USB DPDM for USB-A on this end. So I cannot route both of them below uh, I have to probably go on the bottom side for one of them. But uh, let's uh, deal with that later. Let's cross that bridge later. I probably will just go on the bottom side and just connect it to the jumpers directly. I think that's the most reasonable thing to do. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, then I will fix the symbol. That's fine. Uh, we should move these because these are these are a little bit off grid here. Let's do this. Why are these? What the hell is going on here? Why are these offset? Ha! Huh. So the is the diode the center is off. Seems like the center is off. I didn't even realize until now in PKL. I think I have to fix that. Hmm. 
Make a note. Fix the diode footprints for 0604. No, not 0603. Uh, this is uh, SOD 523. They need to be fixed. They are not symmetric around the center point. At least the courtyards are not. So I have to fix this. Good, good, good. Um, someone making notes. <laughs> All right, and done. Okay. Come on, punk, punk, punk. It's very satisfying when it goes fast like this. Okay, so I think I have to swap these, right? Yeah, because USB C two goes on the right side. So yeah. Uh, let's redo this. Wrong. Right to left. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's do this. Okay, so this CC. We can, let's think, let's think a second here. Should I go on the top side to the CC? Or should I go on the bottom side? I think I have to go on the bottom here. So let's do this. Like this, and then let's do like this. There we go. And then we can go on Right, so I should swap these in here. So let's do this. Cuz these are swapped here. This is for uh accessing them if you want to connect yourself. So let's go on the bottom. Oops. What the? <laughs> well, the oh, because it's outside of the board. How did that happen? Oh, did I move this? Oh God! <laughs> ah, move the board outline. Great. Well done. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Well done. Good job. <laughs> so that's fixed now. Jesus. Okay. Let's try it again. And there we go. Oh yeah, lock the outline. Yeah, I should do that probably. Can I? And where is the lock outline thing? Can you give me a hint where the lock outline uh, option is? Because I would have thought it is here, but it's not. Unless it's in nightly. Is that in board settings? Hmm. I would like a hint here. Context menu? No, well, oh. Is that a separate context menu entry? 
properties, move exactly, position relative to, create corner, select grid, just properties, this is the properties, and then properties, maybe it's in nightly build that you have the locking capability, unless there is some option here in uh, edge cuts. Uh, change layer color. No. Yeah, it really depends. Uh, it's yeah, I, the flexibility of the locking system should be improved. Yeah, I agree on that. Um, okay, Darky. So uh, let's uh, let's just go back to this. It's like I will not be. <laughs> right, little bit. That's a it's a great idea. <laughs> Uh, horrible, yeah. It's like hacking the system, really. Classic keycat, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mounting hose, you can, you can, you can lock. Yeah, that's. Uh, but board outline, I don't think you can lock. It would be nice to essentially have the same handles as you have in any te uh, graphics editor, where you can lock layers too. It's like make it visible, but lock it. So you can select it or move stuff on the layer. That would be nice. So yeah, there's there's so many features like this where I'm like, just just copy it from Photoshop. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So this one is definitely easy to do. Let's do this. This one seems to be easy too. I still have to change the naming here. Um, so this is completely crazy uh, to say the least. I have a little bit space now, so I might be able to just rotate the labels here and name them correctly. That will be something we will be looking into very soon. Um, but for now, let's just uh, connect everything. Usually what I will do, would do if I wanted to uh, make it a nice and clean design, I would probably just squish this together. Also like this is like clean up this traces. It's like there's a lot of visual stuff where I'm like, this looks like an outer router and it looks terrible. So I would clean up a bunch of stuff here. Um, but as I said, uh, I want to just finish this board ASAP. So it has different priorities. I might still do some cleanup because I can't help myself. But in general, that's the idea here. OK, so these are done. Uh, now only the DM and DP are left. Um, yeah, I'm thinking if I should go with all of them on the bottom side. Maybe that's to, for consistency. I should do that. Uh, check on KiCad uh, issue list if this is a feature request already or not, and let's add it if it's not, or at least add a thumbs up. Um, so um, yeah, if you if you have a if you feel like it, I recommend that you check on the um, oh come on, how is it called uh, GitLab for KiCad and see if there is an issue for that. Because it might be already on the to-do list. Who knows? All right, so let's do, let's try this way. Yeah, that would work. Let's do this. Uh, and then this. Like this. It's on the wish list, that's good. At least something. <clears throat> so 
So this was easy. So I probably have to go on the top side for the other one. All right? I think I have to because this is crossing over here. So I can I can only go out here and then I can't go out here anymore because I can't have two traces and the through the same gap which is annoying. Unless I would swap them. Ugh, no, no. <laughs> uh. So this is, this is first. And the second one I can't get uh, on the top side. So I have to get it on the top side, great. That's annoying. <laughs> well, I think I think this is how it works with a lot of the features in KiCad. So yeah, the problem is they there is um, uh, I am sure there is like a dependency list. You can route the USB A above the other two. Oh, you mean? I mean like this. trying to figure out what you're trying to say. Oh, DP, go like this, around. Yeah, I could. The one that you last routed, yeah. So like go all around, but then I, I would still like to keep them uh, somewhat uh, together, the two traces here, if I can make it happen. Uh, so I rather route them on the top side and then flip to the bottom side. Then uh, it's uh, oh uh, shift backspace yeah no was it control backspace anyways oh just backspace thought it was deleting the whole trace this is weird. Uh, let's try doing this. Yeah, top side, I yeah, I can then do the b both of them. Yeah, okay. So um, if I do, let's do this. Um, right. This. And then this, right? This is also not great. Huh. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Lethal Bit. Yeah, uh, we can discuss it and see. Um, so the problem with uh, KiCad development is uh, the learning curve for a new developer is uh, fairly Deep ish. So um, uh, I saw a very uh, interesting thread on the developer mailing list the other day. Basically, they said uh, if you want to become a developer, just start with this laundry list of bug, like small bugs that we have here. It's it's a long, long list to for stabilization related issues, and you will learn the code base that way. So that's a that's a beginning of uh, adding stuff. Second of all. There usually is, uh, they have plans for certain things, how to do them, uh, but they depend on other features that they have in the pipeline. And so um, uh, basically they're like, yeah, we can add this eventually the right way if we fix this, 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 and this, <laughs> which is uh, a, a 
hotter burning fire than this new feature that we want to get added. So that's usually what happens. Um, and I don't know the details here. I'm sure there's uh, there are some changes they are making to the layer um, uh, layer uh, like manager uh, editor or whatever. Um, oh, come on, this is not what I wanted. Something like this. Let's do this, and then I can go to the bottom side, and then just do this, and then do this. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not. I'm not super happy with it, but it w would work. Especially then I can keep these traces together, and then I can keep these traces somewhat together. I can actually do more. Um, do it more like this. Yeah, that should do it. Pretends like it. I'm. 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 Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, I probably could could uh, run this over a shoestring too. So. Uh, yeah. So that should be it. Is that all? How many? Oh, I, we just finished. Wow. That was quick. So that's a quick and dirty layout. So I think now we can look into um, doing the silk screen. So what were you saying? What kind of a capacitor did you want electronic eel? Uh, so let's add that while we are already at it. I think we still have a little bit of time to get that done at least. Uh, so let's... Uh... Oh, yeah, I wanted to edit this uh, symbol. So let's do, do two things. Uh, maybe the same one as on Glasgow? Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, for that, I need to open Glasgow. Glasgow, Glasgow work. Uh, oh, I actually don't need to do that. I can just open another keypad. Um, yes, I want to open it. And then let's look in the schematic. So by the way, if you wanted to see, this is the current status of the Glasgow. It's, uh, it's in a good shape. It's in a very good shape, I think. There's a lot of really cool stuff that Electronic Eel did, uh, like updated the ADCs, updated the um, power sequencing circuit, made it m simpler and cheaper and better, uh, replaced uh, diodes for uh, lower cost and not as weird ones, uh, the end, 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 end. So this is, this is a very cool job that uh, Electronic Eel did. So applause to him, yay. I'm looking forward to ordering the prototypes of these, so yeah. Uh, so this capacitor, I guess, uh, this is what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, this uh, the silk screen. I I, I did re a bunch of rework on the silk screen um, because I wanted it to be more user oriented, not uh, manual assembly oriented. So I wanted it to be more about what blocks it has, what they do. Uh, what will you find? It's like, what dragons are here? So that's the question. <laughs> and that's what... Um... Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's like Markan's like, effort to do the documentation and add all the silk screen. That was an incredible uh, feat. I, I have huge respect for that. Um, yeah, definitely Markan gets uh, big props for the original design and the layout, which is let's say 70, no, 85% of the original layout is still there. I did reroute this section. Uh, these sections are rerouted because uh, Electronic EOL worked on them. Um, but yeah, Markan did a great job. And yeah, I replaced the silk screen because I wanted something more uh, user oriented uh, I can, than, uh, than um, manual assembly oriented, that's all. That's uh, but yeah, Markan, big big props. 
and now uh, more people are contributing to this project, which is nice. Um, well, the, the important thing is to understand that the revision C will live on uh, and will stay with the pinout as is. The additional revision, the, the letters, will live next to each other. They will be separate products and they will still continue living. Um, and so they and they will uh, this is this is not being uh, they will have different features so revision D will not have an LVDS connector but more of the level shifted pins uh, revision E will have an ECP5 and so on and so forth so these will be like tiers of hardware and uh, not like oh in the future this will go away it's like no you will still be able to get that board with this pinout as it is now in the future so yeah okay so sorry it's like it's a tangent on on glasgow a little bit here um you should probably make we will definitely have way more streams about glasgow in near future especially when the campaign is going on i will definitely do a lot of updates on this and also um i want to do uh, streams where i just play around with the glasgow and try out different applets and get them to work and connect them to different hardware. So that's the that's the that's definitely the plan during the campaign. Uh, that's what I will be doing. Um, so yeah. Um, yes, you, right. Oh, thank you, Electronic Eel, for answering that question that Derek asked. Yeah, so Rev C2 has some additional features that Rev C1 doesn't have. Um, so those will obviously not work on Rev C1, but you will still be able to run the same applets that don't require the specific Rev C2 uh, features. So uh, it is not completely out of date. So the one thing you will be missing is the current measurement on the, uh, on the power supplies here. So this is some a feature that is uh, added on Rev C2 and won't be available on Rev C1 because the hardware is just not there. But it won't be useless. <laughs> yeah, it's like Sylvan is still using Rev B. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, um, the idea is that that's White Quark's requirement. Uh, the older hardware will not be obsolete. Um, it's still most you will be able to still do a lot of stuff with it okay yeah um forever yeah that's the plan yeah they will be always supported um okay and uh, so we want the capacitor <laughs> capacitor capacitor probably this guy no this is one microfarad where is the guy? Is that in the power supply section? Yeah, this is the guy. 100 micro, microfarad. 87? Yes. So it is basically just 150 micro. I cannot cut and paste it. KiCad, please add cut and paste capability. <laughs> Copy, block, and then paste it. <laughs> please. Between instances, not just one. OK. Uh, let's just add this uh, symbol. Uh, C. It's in device. Okay. Ah, it's in nightly. Oh, thanks, Derek. Yeah, I, I am, I am really on that close to switching over to nightly because uh, there's so many cool features already. Um, so uh, I, I. Probably the next small thing that I will build will be nightly. Um, the bigger stuff, I still want people to be able to open it up with the non-nightly version. So, uh, okay, not diode, but capacitor. So, cap, cap, cap. Polar small. Polar small. So that's that. And we want it. Where do we want it connected? That's the question. Probably on the five volt. Uh, supply because we have those jumpers so we can have it available or not so do we want it only on USB-A VBUS 
or should we connect it on 5 volts so that we can selectively have it there or have it not there? I think I would probably vote for having it just on the 5 volt here. So that's the question. So. Uh, you can have nightly builds, I think. I, I'm not sure about Pac-Man, but uh, uh, they definitely, like on Ubuntu, they have uh, two repositories, one stable and one uh, nightly, and you can always run on nightly on Ubuntu. Uh, I would expect there is some equivalent solution on uh, Arch, so um, I would hope that there is an equivalent solution for Arch, so you can use the nightly builds um, uh, in parallel uh, to to the um... oh, okay that's good to know uh, what happened here why is it not moving there we go <clears throat> let's copy this let's copy this do I want it as small maybe I don't want it as small maybe I just want it as CP yeah, I want it as normal CP. Let's do this, let's do this. Okay, let's copy the fields. Uh, capacitor, let's copy this. Can I just switch? There we go. Oh, this Chemicon gives me the heebie-jeebies. This will be fun to source these things. They're a pain in the butt to source these uh, capacitors in the exact right size. And ugh. I already had trouble with that uh, when building the prototypes. I have some, but it's like you can't like uh, they are not available in the exact right size. It's like either you get them taller or a different value. It's just ugh, these capacitors, the foil capacitors for this footprint are uh, are a pain in the butt. They're good capacitors though, and there's not really an alternative uh, manufacturer. Oh, I put it in the wrong. Uh, description, I think. No, this is the manufacturer number. There we go. And the bomb key. This is my key. All right. Characteristic, everything else is the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are cute. <laughs> they are very cute. Uh, I use the small parts for um, for everything, but like actual physically large parts. So uh, this capacitor is physically large part in my book. So um, uh, that's why I 150 micro. So what did you say? How much did the, was it supposed to be? Uh, 120 micro, so 150 micro is good enough. Yeah. Whoa! I disconnected myself from the matrix. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's. Also, you, why is it F? This is something I have to fix in Glasgow. It's like this. Farad is redundant, guys. Um, you only put F if this is a value that doesn't have an indicator here. It's, this is a convention. Like, I don't know why this ended up with like... Oh, no, it is you. Okay, thank you. Pshh. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> I, got, I, got, uh, I got on a rant here really briefly now. 
<laughs> now I have to swallow it. Damn. Okay. Cool. Yeah, let's let's just 150. Okay, so it is just for the footprint mostly. So F8, let's add it, annotate, update PCB, close. Wow, this is a chonker. Hey, chonker. <sighs> Man, wow. Uh, wow, this thing is huge. Let's add it here, I guess. Because this won't fit here. I would have to move all these. Yeah, let's just put it here. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, there we go. That's That should do the job. Uh, to make my standard modification to the footprint, remove this guy, uh, put this on fab layer, we don't need it, update PCB, and close. Then we can move this. Uh, I need to probably put it on two lines. Uh, like this, will that work? It just barely fits. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, it barely fits there. Okay. Thick, yeah. Nice and thick. Thick cap. Uh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yes. So uh, we can connect this. And uh, not that thin. Let's do this. Let's do this. Like two vias. That will be neat. And then we can connect this here. Like, uh, maybe like this, have also two vias. For no reason, just for symmetry. <laughs> Let's do like this. Oh, okay. Uh, now we want to fix the symbol here. So we want it to go on here. And then we go to PKL. PKL connector, right? Connector. And then USB. Where is it? USB. Ah, there it's the combo. And we want to copy shield. Can I? Uh, what's going on here? Why is this being weird? Oh, am I in like a weird grid? Oh, yeah, I am. Uh, duplicate block, that's how it works. There we go. So I need this to be S2, or maybe this way, yeah, S2. Let's save this. And there we go. Uh, let's move. Uh, 
uh, wire. And then da dunk dunk da dunk. There we go. Yeah, something like that. I, I, I could put them on top of each other, um, but it's definitely the case with some of the pins here uh, that they are just put on top of each other. Um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I, you can put on top of each other and make them invisible. You're right, yeah. But anyways, it's fine. Uh, this will work too. Um, let's do F8, update PCB and close. And then I can connect us, which is nice. Uh, three and then bottom and then connect, pump, pump. Let's flip this. There we go. There we go. And no flood planes. So this is actually a great candidate for uh, Oshpark After Dark because it's a two layer board and it has only traces and does, doesn't have fill planes. So it could be an interesting board to do with uh, After Dark. Um, so that's what I probably will do. Yeah, so now let's fix the silk screen because this is really like the, the legend here is completely wrong, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of these, but these are the CC, so it doesn't really matter. This, this, it looks okay, I would say. Could be, could be worse, could be better. It's not the nastiest design I did, so. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I think it will be fine. <laughs> yeah, they might be too thin. Yeah, these are point threes. I should probably make them thicker. You're right. Let's do that. Uh, let's go in PCB settings and tracks and bias. Let's add a point five. Can two jumpers fit next to each other other on the DMDP headers? And they can. I've seen jumpers where you uh, where you just plug them in next to each other. I'm pretty sure this works. It's like you have just jumper uh, like across here and across here so that uh, you connect them. Or is it DP? Yeah. DPDP and DMDM. So you would have two jumpers on top of here. I think they are designed to actually fit next to each other on a pin header. I would be surprised if this doesn't work. I could make a space here. I could actually space them out a tad, but then it is not on the grid. Let's fix the silk screen first. They have 2.54 um, pitch, so they should fit. Yeah, it probably, yeah, I can imagine that you can run into shitty jumpers that don't do the job right, so yeah. Um, and we want them to be left and then move. Oh no, it should be right, right. And then uh, like this, let's do this and then edit and it should be uh, C, DP, yeah, this is long. This will not fit in the other ones. 
Also, why is it? This is, looks wrong. Why is this mirrored? Is that the bottom side? Oh, yeah, it is the bottom side. So bottom side will not be a problem because we have space there. But the top side will be interesting. Yeah, that's the bottom side, so that's fine. CD popped. Uh, that will work. So maybe C, D, and put a plus here, an actual plus sign, and then popped to be make it maybe a little bit readable, more readable. Uh, C D plus. C D plus. Um, move and then edit and then write. Okay, move. Should I just? Oh, hmm, they will not fit below each other if they are this height. So I might need to squish them. Oh, also, I can just move these now, right? like this, then I have more space, like this. Like this. This is the always the biggest yak shaving section of actually getting the silk screen text uh, look somewhat reasonable, because this would be C, C, C. Just see, 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 see. <laughs> Is that clear? C, C, C. Then we have C, D, M pooped. C, D, minus, Pu, P, D. And then next one. Yeah, I think the easiest is to do the bottom side first and then see what we need to do to make it work on, uh, on the top side, which has less space. And this is a pooped. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, it's uh, oh, this guy is missing. Probably by accident I deleted it. Right, move. And this is uh, C, D plus, C, D plus. Welcome to the stream, long armed. Thank you for the follow. Okay, CD plus, then this will be CD, no, CA, oh God. Yeah, they are all staggered, right? Center, right, okay. And then uh, this will be A, D plus. Move, 
add it right. Oof. Uh, CD minus CD minus and this will be CA minus move right okay move AD minus Okay, so let's see how this looks. Yeah, I need to either make more space Hmm, yeah, the pull up pull down. I wish there was a symbol for that <laughs> instead of having to write this like a better replacement for PUPD um, that would be that would be really nice <laughs> if there was a shorter version of that because CD plus CD AD minus these all make sense. Um, I will decrease the font height, I guess, by a smidge, by a smidge uh, from one point no height, so point nine, I guess. Or point eight. Let's see what point eight does. Yeah, but I think that's not necessary. It could be point nine. Just to not stick them together. Point nine. Just the font thickness. Dropping is already helpful, I think. Yeah, this looks fine. This is readable. Then it's not melting together, so that's good. There is a Unicode symbol. Oh, these two arrows. If I draw that. No, no, it doesn't have to have it. I could draw that as a symbol. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's try it out in a second when I'm done with these, because these will have to stay the way they are. Thanks for that uh, suggestion, Bob. That's, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. That's a very good suggestion. This might be actually the way we can symbolize it on the Glasgow too, because we have issue with the same issue, with the same problem there. Uh, that is on the to-do list. So it's like having uh, just um, um, just uh, what are they? Like, uh, true type font support uh, in KiCad is on the on the like request list. I'm not sure what the time frame is, but it is there. Soon TM, yes. <laughs> it's with a lot of things uh, KiCad related, right? Uh, I should also do the point 0.9 and then increase it again because it looks out of place otherwise. Okay, let's uh, let's look how they look. Let's see how they look. That looks nice. Okay, so let's fix this. Uh, could draw a footprint for this. But what I can do is essentially see what is this thickness here. Uh, B silk. And da, da, da. So I need thicker. This is two. Is that two ish? Oh, it does it say it here? 
thickness 2 2 yeah so point two five two yeah two two that would be two two okay cool 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 It will. It's the the fun thing about these. It's like we wait for a long time for KiCad to get a feature. Wait, 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 and then suddenly it comes, <laughs> and you're like, "What? It, it actually they did it? Yes, they did. It's a it's a weird thing." Why is it being weird? Why is it not on grid? Ah, so I think the Unicode, um, as you showed it to me here, right? The Unicode is in here somewhere, the up down arrow. Yeah, the up down arrow. It's essentially in one glyph, an up arrow, down arrow. I think this has to be thinner though for that to work. Yeah, that makes much more sense. Um, so height we have, and now I should fit it within a glyph width, uh, with the two. And then I need something that fits perfect. Wow, that's awesome. What happened here? Why is this off? I don't know how that happens. Okay, go there. Is that too much? Like this? That's almost fits in the glyph, right? In the glyph width. That looks good, doesn't it? So I would delete this, make a space instead, or two spaces even. I don't need two spaces, I guess. Just one space is enough. And then I put this guy in here. If I can, Jesus. Should probably make it a footprint, as we discussed. <laughs> uh. Uh, maybe we do need uh, one additional. Just barely. Like this, that should work. And then let's edit this one. Definitely one space, plus a little bit, I guess. Like this looks good. There we go. Okay, let's see. That looks great, in my opinion. The arrows are backwards? Oh yeah, they are backwards. <laughs> Oh, I have to swap them for the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could just copy them and put them on the top layer. That's for sure. Because we need them on the top layer anyways. Uh, F-Silk. Yeah, because I drew it the uh, front silk uh, orientation, not the back silk. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, 
Okay, and then uh, I need to swap you. Let's do this. There we go. Will that work? Up, down, yep. And we can delete this. And then we can edit this. And then we can copy this. One, then two. Uh, this is off. Come on. Like this. Is this off? Yes, it is off. This has to go one up, I think. There we go. Is that looking okay? I think it looks okay, if you ask me. I probably could make a thicker version of this, but yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that looks great, actually. But then they have to be closer, right? Like this. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> this looks really good. Okay. Wow, that's a good symbol. Yeah, it does. It does. It does fit uh, uh, one space character. Font design. Yay. Nope. Yep, okay. And then this guy. That looks wonderful. I might need to adjust the thickness of the line though in here. Will that work? Will this be too chunky? Ah, wrong. Is this oh, now it looks correct, right? It looks uh... <laughs> let's play e e pretend to be designers, yes, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this looks nice now, um. Yeah, it should become a part of the silk screen font, I guess. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's do two, do two. There we go. Yep. 
CCC, CD plus, pull up, pull down, pull up, pull down, pull up, pull down. I should, I think that that looks good. Now let's do the top side because now it actually fits, right? Now it should fit on the top without problems. Yeah, it does. Look at that. It fits great. Um, oh, I should correct this one. And then we are done with the legend, at least. I should delete these and just copy them over. Should go to the top side, there we go. Uh, front silk, and we should go to 0.9 to adjust it, and then 0.9 here too, 0.9, there we go, and now I can adjust the tendrils here. Come on, tendril. Come then draw, do the right thing here. Uh, graphic line, chunk, chunk, chunk. There's like weird different lengths here. It was not consistent. F silk, F silk, F silk, there we go. There we go, there we go. <laughs> I'm glad you like the music, that's nice. Yeah, it's, uh, y if you are looking for the pl playlist, oh, come on. Uh, it's uh, under the Twitch uh, description. It's uh, my Spotify playlist with uh, Synthwave. So you can find all the tracks on there. there. Uh, flip, I said. There we go. Duplicate flip, duplicate flip, right, and then it will go on the other side of it. Uh, right, something like this. Something like this, and like this. Okay, let's see. That's looking good. We should uh, also name these correctly. We need to edit them because we don't need this. We need to put this on fab layer and then update. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> First time cash off. Um, close, wait, <laughs> edit footprint, that's what I meant. And 
and update and close. So we should add a text here. And this is uh, D, uh, D plus, JD plus and JD minus. And this should be center oriented and that's that move uh, something like that. Something like that. It should be JCD, right? And I don't really have space for that. No, it's no C's, no C's, just JD minus and JD plus. Yeah, I will, uh, at least of the main part, I will have a, a YouTube archive. There's always after, so here on Twitch, as soon as this Twitch stream is over, there is a VOD, so video on demand recording of the complete stream. So you can see it at least for two, two weeks, it is available. Um, yeah, so, um, you can you can see all of this Twitch streams, um, um, Twitch emotes. Oh yeah, we need Twitch emotes. <laughs> what are these points uh, like this uh, watching points uh, for, anyways? If not for unlocking some additional um, emojis that are stream related, that would be fun. Yeah, I have to look into that. <laughs> Let's do the Twitch things. Uh, okay, so JD plus JD minus, um, and let's copy that on the back too. Yeah, it's uh, it's like these viewpoints are usually for most streams completely useless. <laughs> so let's just use them for something. It's like uh, you, you guys like are hanging out for hours here with me, uh, giving me good in input and help and uh, having fun. So why not have some emojis as a reward for it, right? Yeah, the archive will be there as soon as I finish streaming today. And uh, yeah, I, the main part I'm cutting out and putting it on Diode Zone and YouTube. And I announced that I uploaded them on Twitter. So you should find all the links below the stream here. And uh, um, we might, uh, the community updates. Okay, Notian, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, uh, I will, uh, we will have the community updates. I think we will convert it into its own segment that will be archived separately. Uh, and I think we will like make this into an actual thing um, with source like links and stuff. So we will do that for an, about an hour or half an hour to an hour before the stream and then go to the, um, this kind of stuff, which is more of a, uh, mellow section where we just hang out and build stuff. And then update, and this one, the same thing. And then save. All right, so now we need also labels for this and we need to call this Uh, let's call this uh, C C 
CVB, yeah, CV bus, and this will be AV bus. Uh, will this fit in the corner here? Jesus. This is really squeezed in there. Let's see. Yeah, that should be good enough, I guess. Yeah, this is just the default stuff though, DXmon. So this stuff with the emoji unlock stuff is on there. It's just the default stuff that the stream just has. I didn't put any like effort into um, cleaning this up and making it uh, uh, custom to the stream. So that's the that's the current situation. Okay, and this should be edited, edit footprint. Let's uh, remove the center thing again, which I hate. And then uh, put this on FFAP, there we go, update, close. And this should be uh, CC1, CC2, VBus. Now let's do this. Dancing with just their emoji, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see if this fits. CC1 and CC2. CC2. CVB. Something like that. Let's do end to CVB. Move. And we should do it on right. Look at this. That should be good enough. It's more of like a memory reference for when you are screwing around with this stuff so that you don't remember which one was what roughly. No, I uh, edit the footprints directly in the in the design file. So what I do is I, I go on edit and then edit footprint. Then I edit the footprint and store it back into the PCB. Uh, I don't save it into the library because uh, editing the the stock library, even if it, this was permitted, because I think it, you don't even have permissions to write them, uh, it would wouldn't be permanent. Uh, I just have a little bit different style for the footprints that I want, and these are just the standard changes I make. Um, yeah. All right, so let's put this back back where it came from. Uh, this will be fun. Shoot, okay. So let's put the version number here. Uh, who? Yeah, icebreaker PMOD USB. Hmm. Yeah, I think I have to go also to smaller font here. Uh, four, four, let's do this. But more, uh, just one, let's do just one. Yeah, that should be good enough to at least describe what it is. Um, uh, this can be broken into two lines like this. Will this fit? Uh, it should fit nicely. Uh, should be USB PMOD, right? Not PMOD USB. Uh, 
like this. Yeah, they keep uh, separate copies of all the footprints within the project in, in the file itself. Uh, this will be the same case with the symbols in the new format for uh, schematics. They will also keep a copy. So you will not need the cache library as far as I understand. So this is something they are fixing in uh, v6 uh, KiCad. So that's uh, pretty exciting. OK, that's done. Then I need the null. Oh, that's an old null, right? Because that's just text? Yeah, it is. So let's uh, put the dummy um, logo in here. PKL logo. And then null logo, let's say, 5 millimeter. Like this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where do I put it? That's the question. I don't really have space for it now. Let's see. That looks good. Oh, I can put it to the side here. I think I can put it here. There we go. Uh, ta -ta. Almost done. This is just cosmetic stuff. Something like that. Oh, I still need the text, right? Yes. Uh, just for the name. Like this. Let's do three. That looks good. Uh, okay, so that's that's good. I think we are done. Icebreaker USB P mod. We have the signals labeled. Uh, we don't have labels for this, so we should fix this uh, because this is. ground here and then five volts on the other side uh, five v5 plus no five v plus right or is it five plus volt or five V5, 5V, 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 right? That's the correct one. Yep, there we go. Yeah, maybe V5 plus. Plus five volts. <laughs> this is plus five volts here. Like this. So maybe that's the option here. Right. Okay. So I think we have all the jumpers. So this is the aux 5 volts, then we have naming here, that looks really good. I really like this arrow, That's that was a really good suggestion. Lovely, lovely. Um, or what? what is it, um, um, look mom not computer is say, saying, lovely jubbly. <laughs> Uh, if you're not watching Gluck Mom No Computer, uh, you really should. It's a really good channel. Uh, <laughs> stable release build. No, that's stable. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, it is uh, a stable keycat. Yeah. 
it's a it's a thing that he says and it's uh yeah i know it is a british british ex, uh, way of saying it and i love it it's just it, somehow it sounds so super funny to me and uh i like it it's nice lovely jobly uh, <clears throat> okay cool i think we're done aren't we done i think we're done We need the resistor, like some stuff we can even change when we are done with, uh, like make the prototypes. Uh, we can we can swap around with the resistors, but yeah, I think this is this is cool the way it is. Um, yeah. Oh, you are right. Thicken the traces for power. Yes, sir. That sounds good. I right, let's do that. Um, I thought I added the 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Why didn't it uh, take? There it is. Can I edit them in bulk? Yes, I can. So let's try to select traces here. This is something that is really w wonderful in the uh, recent nightly builds. You can actually have the, here in the right corner, you have uh, filter select selectors for, um, for if you do this selection, you can do the filter selection directly in the UI and um, say what you want selected and whatnot. At the moment I have to basically go like this, add some more stuff, and then I will do some filtering and manual deselection too. So I think these are all the power traces. That looks good. And then I go into select, uh, filter selection, no footprints. N I don't need vias. No text items, no drawings, no board outline, no zones. Then it deselects that. Now I have to deselect the traces that it by accident also selected. So this, yeah, great. This, this, and it's very dangerous because now if I make too much of a mistake, um, I will have to redo everything. So yeah, uh, but this will be definitely at the end faster than me doing this one by one, everything. Uh, this one should actually be also thick, correct? Yes, it should be thick. We don't need these uh, power supplies to be thick. This is just for the diodes. Um, good, 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 good. Anything else? Now let's do the edit. Yeah, net classes. That's true. That's true. Five. Okay. Ooh, that's fun. Come on. There we go. Let's do like this. That actually fits. That's good. This one fits good. This one fits good. This is not really a problem here. Good, good, good. That should do the job here. There we go. Nice. Clean, clean, clean. Oh, 
this doesn't have to be that thick. That was a mistake that I missed. Okay. There we go. And there we go. Very good. Better? CC2. Oh yeah, I by accident I had CC2 selected. Yeah, I fixed it now. Thank you, thank you. Oh, come on. That jumped like crazy. What was that about? There we go. Let's fix this. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, cool. I think now we are done. <laughs> yeah, it's like something along those lines because they, it also has like magnetism to its original position that you pulled it from. So it's like you drag it and it's like <laughs> you rip it off. It feels like something impressive. Oh, yeah, 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 the control. Yes. Um, so. If I go B and then U and then Control, it still has snapping to original position, right? I'm pressing Control now. Is it Shift? It's Shift. It's Shift for me. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, whichever button it is, it's always like, uh, was it this or this or maybe this? So yeah, no problem. Sort it. I think I'm happy. Let's see what. Uh, yeah, I will uh, essentially. That's uh, that would be it for today. Mm, I I will uh, run it by Kate and uh, Conrad, and if post it probably on Twitter and whatnot. Uh, update it, uh, send this as an update on the forum. So the forum you should check out. Um, we have a very nice uh, uh, discourse uh, forum with uh, uh, lovely posts in there. So you should check it out. Um, and then uh, also on Discord, uh, we can discuss this. I think we are pretty good spot here. Uh, all we need to do is uh, mm, when I order resistors to have the right values of resistors, so we need to um, make sure that uh, these are adjusted accordingly. Um, I need to the, some connectors and whatnot to order that, but uh, I think this will actually be a candidate for Oshpark uh, um, uh, After Dark um, um, PCB, so I will order those. Um, Crack DNS, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, and uh, otherwise, um, yeah, thank you very much for being here. Um, this uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I think we uh, we have a somewhat of a consensus that the community updates should become its own thing. Um, I will make it a little bit more structured, hopefully. Uh, I learned a lot uh, doing that uh, over the last few weeks uh, when we started out, like just saying a few things, what's happening here at one bit squared, what's happening in the uh, other greater world of um, um, DIY electronics, uh, hardware hacking, FPGA, ASIC design, open source hardware, uh, like higher level open source hardware type of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we should expand it and make it into its own segment. That would be fun. Um, and then I will also crowdsource some uh, news and updates. Uh, so thank you very much for helping out with that. And, uh, and that is uh, one thing we will do. 
Uh, this stream will be uh, um, archived uh, on, uh, on Twitch uh, immediately after this is over, so you can watch the uh, the rest of the stream uh, as a VOD. Uh, I do re uh, let uh, Twitch record it. It will be available for like two weeks. Uh, I will the main section of the stream, what we are now in, and I'm wrapping up now, uh, will be cut out and recorded and put on YouTube and uh, Diode Zone as always. Uh, look for an announcement on my Twitter uh, when that happens. Uh, yeah, and as always, thank you very much for everyone who is supporting these streams. I really, really appreciate that. This makes uh, it's very motivate motivating and really helps with uh, paying for the gear and for my time and uh, uh, keeps these stream streams going. So thank you very much, everyone who has uh, um, Twitch um, subscriptions for this channel as well as uh, the wonderful, wonderful, generous Patreons. Uh, so um, check the link for Patreon below. And uh, um, if you have some spare cash, I really appreciate if you can uh, chip in into the tip jar uh, to support this. Uh, maybe someday we can afford an editor who will cut down those streams into a more smaller digestible format. Who knows? Um, but for that, uh, we are still very far away from being able to do such a thing. Uh, so for now, it's just raw <laughs> streaming and me rambling uh, going up on YouTube. That's what it will be for now, uh, because I don't have the uh, time to uh, edit this down into uh, a more smaller format, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so thank you again, and the Patreons. I would like to give the shout outs to the usual uh, and wonderful and new. Uh, we have one new person in the shout out tier on uh, uh, Patreon. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Jamin, Aki Van Ness, Ben Venick, Brennan Ashton, Drew Fustini, Edward Borden, Go Jimmy Pie, Jeff Wang, Jonas uh, uh, Kudat, uh, who is new. Thank you very much. Uh, Jordi Parky Rodriguez, Kelly, um, Matt uh, Schmieder, Matthias Pritchett, Miha Benovitz, Sid Price, Tom Keddy, and Sean C. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, I hopefully will see you next week on Tuesday. And uh, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Bye.